we were, and we discussed that uh, the reason to introduce superspace is because we wanted to define a field theory uh, in the supersymmetry. And uh, so now today we will start describing what a superfield is, knowing that uh, superspace is. Okay, so to define superfields, To define a superfield, we have to recall a, a, say, a, say a scalar field. A scalar field, I call it phi. So a scalar field has two properties. First of all is that is a function of a of the coordinates x mu, but it also transforms accordingly under the Poincaré group. In the case of a scalar, the transformation is very simple because it says scalar is invariant on the on the Lorentz transformations. But <coughs> still, uh, we have some information about uh, how it transforms. So we have to find we have to use these two properties of of uh, fields in standard space time to be able to generalize this uh, concept of, of field to a superfield. Okay. Okay. So this is a very simple thing. It just the field is just a function of, a, of the space-time coordinates. So now let's try to discuss these transformation properties. So for instance, under translations, <coughs> let's see how a field transforms, a scalar field, how it transforms. And then we, I will use some of the uh, concepts we have used uh, previously when we, def when the, we derived the um, supersymmetry algebra. First of all, phi, on the uh, translations, it will transform as an operator transforms on the translations. Because phi at the end will be a field, and you will see this is a field, it will be like an operator in Fox space in terms of uh, creation and annihilation operators. So phi will transform as an operator. So phi transforms like e to the minus i a mu p mu times phi times e to the i a mu p mu, where p are the momenta, the four momenta that are the generators of translations. OK, so this is the standard u dagger phi u transformation. And this is like a, an operator transforms. So p is the, the abstract uh, representation of, of, a, of a, a, a linear momentum of a p mu. OK. But of phi also is a function. It's a function of the of the x mu. So as a function, it transforms as a, a, in a particular representation of of, of the of the um, translation group. In the sense also that so also as a function, phi as a function of uh, x goes to e to the i a mu p mu. I notice that I, I'm drawing this p different from that one. This is a particular representation of p. And so I made it more sophisticated. And uh, acting on phi. And this is just simply phi of x mu plus a mu. This is just a translation. I'm just translating the coordinates x to x plus a. 
So at the end, this, what will this give us? This will give us a um, representation of the operator P acting on phi as a differential operator. Why? Because we can expand this in a Taylor series. And of course, we can expand this in a Taylor series and compare. That compares, take the, so the linear term and then read what P is. And P is what we all know is essentially I times the gradient. Are everybody with me? You can see some confused faces. Yes? OK. Very good. So let, 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 let's see uh, how, how this uh, goes. OK, so e to the i a mu p mu equals to that. <coughs> so let's f try to find what uh, the operator p mu is. So this will be, the first term will be the identity. So that will give us phi of x mu plus i a mu p mu acting on phi plus extra terms. Whereas this one will give us phi of x mu plus Okay, so now we can, I'm doing something you have done already since uh, before you knew how to ride a bike or something. <coughs> so this is, uh, this tells us that P mu equals minus I D mu. Okay. I'm doing it carefully because this is precisely what I will represent for the supersymmetric case. Okay, so we know that this is the operator. P mu equals minus I D mu. And then uh, now we can compare the how the field transforms. We have two ways of transforming, this way and that way. And we can do that uh, infinitesimally, as we did when we derived the algebra of supersymmetry. And we'll find a representation of what the transformation for a, a field is. Question, yes? Yes. But the step in between, that e to the i, a mu, p mu, where did you get that from? Yes, this is the action of, uh, of the, an element of the translation group, mm, yeah. which is e to the i, a mu, p mu, acting on phi. So that's the representation. The second line, you um, treat phi like a vector, and in the, and the second line, I treat phi like a function. So that that, that will be my, my space of functions. This operator p will act. The p as an operator will act on my space of functions. So it will be e to the i a mu p mu acting on phi, and then I, I'll, I'll see what. Then I can read what p is as a generator of a translations group. Okay, so the first and second line. Exactly. In the same way as we did for the derivation of uh, the supersymmetry algebra. In the first line, I treat phi as an operator. So it transforms u dagger or u inverse p u. That's like a matrix or in general, as an operator transforms. And the second one, it will be like a vector, as you would say. But in this case, it will be in, uh, instead of being a vector, it's just a function of, of, uh, of x. So it's a, it's a transformation. Yes, it's a big one. <laughs> OK, very good. This is important, because that's, that's where I'm going now. <clears throat> OK, so then we have precisely the two expressions. And we, we, it's the same phi, so we can compare how phi transforms. So infinitesimally, what is it that we will get? The, the term in the, the first line, we can do what we did again in, in the, in the 
in the derivation of the supersymmetry algebra, I will do it again. So it's, I will try to write that infinitesimally. So I will write 1 minus i a mu p mu acting on phi times 1 plus i a mu p mu equals, and then I, I use the transformation from the second line, and that will be <coughs> 1 plus i a mu, and now the operator p mu that I know is uh, i times the gradient acting on phi. And I, I will just use this because it's just infinitesimally. So I have to expand here and expand there. <coughs> OK, so as usual, the first term cancels. 1 phi phi gives me the 1 phi. So that's, uh, that's OK. So, and then, and then the, 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 other, the linear term will be p phi with a minus i, and then phi p, phi p with a plus i. OK? So that will give me an i commutator of phi and a mu p mu. OK? <coughs> and on this side, I will have i a mu p mu phi. So that, will, that, that tells us what the commutator is. So then we have that uh, or phi a mu p mu equals p mu I told you was uh, minus i d mu. So I have a mu d mu phi, OK? So as, this, as usual, as I told you, the, remember when we derive the algebra of supersymmetry, this, the commutator tells us this operator acting on that equals to the translation. There's an i missing. There's an i missing. I think you're right. Thank you. OK. So, so I will try. Uh, this is just an exercise. So uh, this essentially, this was telling you something trivial. Just so that p acting on phi gives you a translation of phi, d phi. OK. So now I will do that for a superfield. So, so for a superfield, I have to follow the two steps. The first is a function in super space, and second, that it transforms accordingly under the supersymmetry algebra. So for a superfield, <clears throat> so as I told you, I'll follow the two steps. The first step, and I will write this, uh, I will write just the, the, so the general, and I'll call it scalar superfield. So for that, I, uh, I need to write uh, the expression. I just uh, Sorry, I don't, I don't find my, my it's, it's a long expression that I want to write it as a 
with other, all the factors correctly just to well. <coughs> x function of theta and theta bar. So what I will do now is expand this function in powers of theta and theta bar. So I will write, essentially I will fill up the blackboard. So be prepared for this. <coughs> so the first term will not depend on theta and theta bar. So it will just be a standard scalar field. That's what this, this super field inherit the name scalar because of the first term in the expansion. It's just a standard scalar field. Yes, but uh, yes, but just I, I will just try not to, to fill up of the too many indices at the moment because we have too ma too much to write. So take a deep breath and and be prepared for this. Okay. <laughs> so the next term. It's linear on theta. So when I write theta psi, that means I'm just contracting with the alpha indices. OK, so you can see already the importance of superfield. This, this field here, this phi, which is the, uh, the zero of order expansion, is just a standard scalar field. Now this theta, the coefficient of theta, is a function of psi, of, of, of x, I'm sorry. And then psi, because theta is anti-commuting, psi is also anti-commuting. So psi has to carry alpha indices, so this is spinner. Okay, so then you can this this is the idea of the superfield. Each of the components or the terms in the expansions will be different superfields, uh, these different uh, 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 fields. So this will be a scalar, and this will be a spinner field, a uh, fermion. Okay, plus then I have the term in theta bar, and that will be another field. Chi bar, this is a left handed, this will be right handed. Plus, there is a term on theta theta that will multiply <coughs> another scalar field, n, plus theta bar theta bar. That will give you another scalar field. <coughs> but you have extra pieces, which are theta, sigma mu, theta bar. And the coefficient that multiplies this, so this has one theta and one theta bar. The thing that multiplies this has to carry a mu index. So this will be like a vector field plus theta theta. times theta bar lambda bar of x is another right-handed spinner plus theta bar theta bar times theta rho <coughs> and the very last term which is very important Theta, theta, theta bar, theta bar, times d of x. Okay. So I make the expansion of x as a of, of s as a function of x, theta and theta bar. So I make like a Taylor expansion in different powers of thetas. So independent of theta, linear in theta, quadratic, and so on. And this is the the biggest power I can write. Higher powers of this will be zero. That's the, that's the beauty of the of the anti-commuting variables. You stop in the, in the Taylor expansion up to finite order. <coughs> okay, so th this tells us that the general scalar uh, scalar superfield will have as components many standard fields, transforming other scalars or spinners even as a vector. Okay. So this is what generalizes 
this part so we know now how the scalar superfield is. And now we have to do the second part, the how it transforms under the superconcary algebra. Okay. Okay, so for transformation, so again, I will use the same argument that I use for the scalar field. I have to use it first transforming as a as an operator. And then how it transforms under standard uh, change uh, in, in the superspace coordinates. So first, I will. <coughs> Notice that I will try to use only the, the supersymmetry part of the transformation, not the, the rest of the, of the, of the, not the rest of the um, Poincaré superalgebra, because we know already how the field transforms on the Poincaré uh, superalgebra. So. <coughs> This will be as an operator and uh, as a field as a yes as a function of x theta and theta bar this will go uh, i'm sorry i am very sorry these thetas are not are not thetas are are q's q's are the generators sorry These are the generators of a supersymmetry algebra. <coughs> okay, so an S of x theta and theta bar will go like e to the i epsilon, and then here I have to write. Let me just write it as a more sophisticated Q, something like that, just to make it different from the, the standard Q that uh, this is, is a differential operator that we lacked on uh, on on s okay yes epsilon the epsilon is a standard epsilon. <laughs> Sorry, the, I've been so busy trying to make the Q special that the epsilon became, yes, it's epsilon. Epsilon Q plus epsilon bar Q bar. Okay? Yes, so it's the same thing that we were doing for the translations uh, group, but now I'm doing for the supersymmetry part of the algebra. Okay? So, and Yes? Yes, this is the sophisticated queue. Yes. This one and this one. Because this will be the operators, the differential operators, like the i times the gradient that I use for the piece. 
And this is the abstract cube that I just, like the normal P that I was using there, okay? So this is just uh, uh, <coughs> following essentially the same steps there. Now, on the case of the scalar field, I used the, uh, the equal sign over there that e to the i a mu p mu acting on phi was phi of x plus a. So this is the thing I, I'm still missing here. I have to write this to be equals to s of a function of changing x, changing theta, and changing theta bar. Okay? And then from that I can read what the operators q will be as differential operators. Okay, so this will be, since I don't have space there, I will, have, I will write it here. So this will be S of, and uh, <coughs> you will see that uh, uh, X mu will transform, has to transform, uh, but we don't know exactly how. And uh, so far the only thing, the best thing we can write is, uh, is as follows. We have to write something that is, has the right uh, transformation properties. So I'll, I'll put just an arbitrary constant, that as, as I usually put. And then I have epsilon sigma mu theta bar. Okay, so something that has to be linear on the thetas, but transforms with a mu index. So this is the only quantity that we can make. And C is the arbitrary coefficient that we have to fix. So that is how X has to transform by a uh, transformation uh, of, uh, of the uh, supersymmetry. Uh, remember that if I, we make two supersymmetry transformations, we are left with x transforming by x plus a constant, or x plus something. So that means that x has to transform under the queues, because it can, this cannot be zero. OK, and then the theta, theta just shifts in the same way as, as the x used to shift. So theta goes to theta plus epsilon. And uh, theta bar goes to theta bar plus epsilon bar. Okay. So essentially, this should be how a super, a super field transforms on their, this transformation. And the C is so far is arbitrary and need to be fixed. Okay. Why don't we include sigma bar terms? Uh, yes, we will include that. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Plus con plus conjugate, yes. Thank you very much. This is real. So this has to be real. Thank you very much. Yes. Is it, is it missing in the expansion above? In what expansion? Yes? You yeah, are writing one term with sigma mu, but no term with sigma bar. Is this in front of us? Oh, no, no. That's, that's OK, because the, this, the, that theta sigma mu is theta bar. It's, it's just a number. It's just a, So you take the bar, it, it will give you the same thing. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. So that, that's OK. So, yes, no, but here's, here's important, because I have to add the complex conjugate here, because the, X, the coordinates, x mu coordinates, are, 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 are real. Yes, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so actually, let me just write this to be more explicit. X mu goes to X mu minus I C epsilon sigma mu theta bar plus I C star. And this looks like a theta sigma mu Epsilon bar. If you do the transformation, remember that the sigmas are self adjoint. Very good. Okay, so. Should it be sigma bar? Yeah, remember that the sigmas are, are um, self adjoint. So if you have something with alpha indices and something with alpha dot. So this one has the same structure, yeah. OK. <clears throat> so now the step, sorry, we'll have time. Yes, with the step to finish is that we have to, <clears throat> to do the infinitesimal version of that. 
and the infinitesimal version of that eventually will give us an a differential operator representing the Qs and the Q bars. And uh, <clears throat> so if we make, we make this expansion of this x, x mu, and then compare the epsilon coefficient to the epsilon coefficient of Q, and so on, so on we can read what Q and Q bar are, and then eventually fix the, Q, the, fix the Cs. So <clears throat> this will give us, so comparing, this will give us the following. I Q alpha equals minus I C sigma mu alpha beta dot beta bar beta dot d mu plus d by d theta alpha. Okay. Without this term, this will be identical to what we had for the momenta. The momenta were shif shifting x to x plus a constant, and that will give you the, the, the gradient. But here we have this extra piece coming from changing of the x's. We have to make that expansion. <clears throat> and then we'll have, so if we take out the q's, or the, we take out the, uh, the i, let me just write it without the i, just to be so minus i d by d theta alpha minus c sigma mu alpha beta dot theta bar beta dot d by dx mu. And similarly, we'll find q bar alpha dot to be i d by d theta bar alpha dot plus c star theta sigma mu alpha dot times d by dx mu, d mu. OK. We have that, and we also had that uh, p mu was equal to minus i d mu. So we have now, in principle, the representation of the, of the supersymmetry generators with the translations as differential operators. But we still haven't done the whole thing because we haven't fixed the values of, of C. How do we fix the value of C? Just impose that these objects, since they have to be representations of the supersymmetry algebra, they have to satisfy the algebra of uh, n equals 1 supersymmetry. So to fix C, We have to use, we have to impose that this Q alpha, Q bar alpha dot equals the 2 times sigma mu alpha alpha dot times P mu. OK? so. So what I'm writing for you is differential operators, as I promised, for all the generators, the Q, the Q bars, and the P. And uh, the only thing that we haven't fixed is the coefficient C. And the C, we can fix it by just imposing this, uh, the algebra. They have to be representations of the algebra. So this algebra, so n equals 1 to supersymmetry, has to be satisfied. And for that, you, will, you can plug this into this algebra. It's a standard exercise that you will do in the second example sheet. And, uh, and then you will find out that the real part of C equals to 1. And then the, the imaginary part of C is arbitrary, so we'll choose it. We just choose it to be 0, so choose C equals to 1. OK, so that is, there's no other constraint for what the C is. 
Okay. I have to tell you that this is probably the, the simplest way of deriving this representation. You will see in, in books or in other books, or for instance, the Wessenbagger book, that they derive this by using the definition of the um, of a superspace, remember, in terms of the coset of the super Poincare group modeled out by the um, Lorentz group. And so use a representative of the coset and try to use the, the algebra of that. And from that, you can read up what the, the representation for Qs and Q bars should be. Uh, I found that a bit more complicated the, to, to do, uh, at least in the, in the lecture. So I, I chose this the, uh, derivation, which I think is simpler. <coughs> OK. So, so now we have that. We have what we wanted. We, we have that, that the, the fields, we know how they transform uh, as functions. Uh, I mean, we know that, that they are functions of, 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 of a super space, and they, they transform on the Poincare according to these um, uh, differential operators q and q bar. Still, we have to, to find the equivalent of this transformation, that uh, the commutator equals to that. Okay. So that, that is uh, straightforward, and I will do it now. Any questions so far? Sorry? Um, could you say something about the transformation on the Lorentz fields? Because for a usual scalar, it's trivial, but in this case, I don't know. Uh, yes. Um, <coughs> since this is a scalar, it's a scalar. In that sense, it will be. You can have uh, another superfield that will carry indices. So instead of S of x theta theta bar, you have an S alpha, for instance, or S. And that will transform on the Lorentz group as, as a spinner or so. OK. And that's why the first component of the superfield tells you uh, that, uh, how to name the superfield. So in this case, it will be scalar. But in principle, you can have, say, a superfield. And we will see in the next uh, couple of weeks superfields that will be, say, W alpha. So it will be not be a scalar, but then you will know how it will transform. Depending according to the index, it will transform as a spinner or, or any, any, any other uh, um, quantity that transforms under the Lorentz group. So that, 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 that is taken care of by, by the index. Is, is that what you're asking? Yes, in this, yes. Here, you mean this. Yes. You see, here, since uh, these are standard fields, so they will transform as, as standard vector fields. OK? But uh, what I was saying is that, for instance, this is because we started with a super field having no, no Lorentz indices. So then, this is how it, uh, you will write it. If you, write, if you start with a superfield that carries some Lorentz indices, then the whole contraction here will be different. And then you will generate other kind of fields. And then depending on the index structure, it will, tell, it will be scalars or vectors or spinners and so on. Yes, sir. OK. <clears throat> Good. So I still owe you that, the generalization of that equation. And uh, again, so this. The step is the same as always. We do the infinitesimal version of each of the two transformations and then read. Okay? The, the one upstairs in the first line, the infinitesimal version will give us the commutator, as usual. And, and uh, the, on the second line, that will give us the right-hand side how the operator uh, acts as a, as, a, as a differential operator. Okay, so. Fine.
i s epsilon q plus epsilon bar q bar equals i epsilon q plus epsilon bar q bar acting on s. Okay, so that's the standard thing. This is the commutator acting on s. How it tells you how the corresponding representation of s is. In this case, it's a representation as a field, so this will be a differential operator. Okay, so this defines what uh, supersymmetry transformation is. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so to finish, we have uh, 10 more minutes, so we have 10 minutes to fill up the blackboard of, uh, of a, a lot of equations. So, okay. Because now, is, what is it that we, we, we have to do? We have to take every, this action, this action acting on S, this action is defined by those uh, differential operators acting on S, but S is all this, okay? So this will tell us, I'm sorry, um, all this will, be, will give us delta S. This is how S transforms on the, on the supersymmetry. So S transforms on the supersymmetry in this way and as a uh, differential operator in this way. And so this will tell us how each of the components of the, of the superfield transform. Okay, so I had to tell you how delta phi is, what delta psi is, delta chi bar is, and so on, all the way to delta d. So they all will transform as combinations of the other ones, and that, that's why it will be a superfield. Okay, so you're ready? So this implies This is a lot of fun, actually. Okay, so this implies that delta phi equals epsilon psi plus epsilon bar psi bar. Okay, and this is the most explicit way of saying that supersymmetry takes a boson and gives you a fermion. So you have delta of a scalar gives you fermions. Okay, so that's. And how do you get that? By acting on this, uh, from uh, um, these differential operators on, on S. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> and then delta psi will be equal to 2 epsilon m plus sigma mu epsilon i d mu phi plus v mu it's epsilon bar. Excuse me? Where does the psi bar come from this equation? Here. Aha, uh -huh. let me just see it. <clears throat> the psi bar has to come, uh, let me see. Um, you call it psi bar. Nice. Okay, got it. Oh. Sorry, yes, you're right. I know what you mean, yes. Sorry, yes, thank you very much. Yes, that's the problem. There are so many equations. 2 epsilon n plus sigma mu epsilon bar, i d phi, v mu phi plus v mu. Yes, very good. So now delta chi bar equals <coughs> 2 epsilon bar n 
plus plus minus epsilon sigma mu i d mu phi and d mu we have a phi psi chi bar delta n epsilon bar lambda bar minus i over 2 d mu psi sigma mu epsilon bar delta n epsilon rho plus i over 2 Delta V mu equals, this is the longest, epsilon sigma mu lambda bar plus rho sigma mu epsilon bar plus i over 2 V mu psi sigma mu sigma bar nu epsilon minus epsilon bar Sigma bar nu, sigma mu, d nu, chi bar. Then delta lambda bar to epsilon bar d plus. I over two then Delta row. We're almost there. Two more and we're done. Okay, so it's two epsilon D. This one okay <clears throat> so this is telling you how different component fields transform on their supersymmetry. As I told you, the scalar goes to fermion, fermion goes to scalars. Again, the fermion goes to scalars here, and so on. Uh, the vector goes to fermions, etc. So you have how uh, these particles of different spins transform into each other. It's all this related by, by spin one half. The only thing, uh, this is, if you wonder how to derive this, uh, 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 so I told you, you, you will get it by applying the, 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 the differential operators on the general superfield, and that will be, as you can have, uh, you may have guessed already, it will be part of the example sheet number two. Okay, so you will see it in full glory, all the details about the derivation of this. If you don't, if you don't do it, uh, Joe Conlon will do it for you. And so, so this is this is good to have because this this is as as complicated as it can it can get uh, in, in in this in this uh, this kind of calculations. You 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 will get very familiar with all the properties of this um, two component uh, fermions and so on. Uh, just to, before finishing, because we ran out of time, I would like to make an observation that it will be very important for the rest of of the course is that. This, all the fields are transforming among each other, but look at D. D is the last one. <coughs> it's the last one and transforms as uh, the total derivative of something. So this is very important. So important.
that, that this is a total derivative. So something you will have to keep in mind and that uh, we will use in, in the next uh, few lectures. So, so start getting familiar with it. Uh, so that's the, the important detail that you have to know besides the fact that you can see now explicitly how scalars transform to fermions and fermions to scalars and so on. Yes. Yes, I mean, but, but uh, we're defining uh, infinitesimally. Infinitesimally, we'll get that. Right? So we'll get a, fermi a scalar goes to a fermion. And that's, that's everything we have to say. Sorry. If the, uh, sorry, I don't, uh, I don't know. He's saying that it's only a small increment that is us uh, a spin apart. Yes, and of course, this is the algebra. That, that's what you're asking, yes. This is just the algebra. So, so you, we're, not, we're not asking for more than that. So on the supersymmetry algebra, we get this. If you want to exponentiate it, you can exponentiate it. That, that's what you, you want to say. But uh, this is just infinitesimal. Yeah. 